I'm sure plenty of you guys recognize this game as part of the Siphon Filter trilogy that was on the PS1, but there was also this online multiplayer made game, Omega Strain, which was a PS2 exclusive. So yeah, you could play the game single player, but let's just say I don't think it was a enjoyable experience. I think it was just the weakest game of the series. So unlike the original game itself, of that being Omega Strain, you can now go back to playing as Gabe Logan. The thing is for this game is that I think the guys realized that their series was, well, getting stale at this point. Because for, for the past four games, they've been using the same exact gameplay stuff over and over again. And so, this time, I think the team just had to freshen things up. As Bent Studio will go on to make Siphon Filter Dark Mirror, which was originally a PSP exclusive. But the following year, it was brought over to the PS2, which we'll get to a little bit more in that one. So gameplay wise is that it follows the events of Omega Strain. As a commander of an agency that doesn't officially exist, Gabe Logan specializes in missions too dangerous to conventional intelligence and too sensitive for a military response. Take control of the precision strike op operative as he is inserted into the field to uncover the latest threat to global security, a project only known as Dark Mirror. Alright, with that on out of the way, I think we should just talk about the gameplay for this one. Is that they freshen things up by having a a more of a either a center or maybe somewhat of a third person shoulder perspective. But that might just depend on like if you're like aiming or whatever. Because there is an aim down sight thing. But you guys can play this in two different ways in terms of gameplay. You guys can play in a newly made system scheme of that third person combat. Or, you can play like the original versions of the original game, that being the whole lock on the enemies to start shooting them randomly. But I just prefer the new one because you can actually instantly go for a headshot and they'll just be dead. So that makes the gameplay a lot easier and you can conserve ammo any way possible. Now, the thing is, is that you don't have much weapons to carry this time around as there's only at least like three different loadouts of weapons which you can use a sniper rifle, maybe a pistol, a machine gun or maybe something that's non-lethal in some sort of ways but that really depends to what you're looking for or at least just what you're getting here. There's also some gadgets for you to use but that just depends on some certain areas of the game but there's also these secret files that you can find along the game to unlock some sort of concept art but you also have these goggles. Now they really depend on what they do. They can detect locks, or maybe you can use some sort of thermal vision, so that way you can see certain things that you can't really see. Oh, and can I just say something about this game? This game has a lot of trip mines. Yeah, they have way too many mines around these places, and I always remember them for this. Even when some areas you just don't think there is, they just like to place them out of thin air, and I have no idea, because every time I'll go to some places, it doesn't have to be just beginning to love full either. There are some places where I'll just go, and they just put a trip mine. Can I just say that these devs are mad, because they put so many trip mines in the game, and you just fall for them every single time? I think this just puts me off sometimes. I just don't know why they did this, but thankfully the sequel which being Look and Shadow will get rid of that nonsense. But one of the biggest differences between the PSP and the PS2 versions I just want to say is that the PSP version had online play while the PS2 version didn't. But speaking of the PS2 version, there are quite a few more differences too. It has remastered graphics, better frame rate, no online play, but there is progressive scans so you guys can play the game in 480p. And the game has been censored of all things, because the PSP version was rated M, but the PS2 version was given a T rating. But the thing is, is that both differences between the PSP and the PS2 version is that each version has a slight altered cover of the game. They censored some of the swearing and the violence and some references here and there. I don't know why they did this. And you can easily tell whenever you hear the script going off. 
so once you compare the two, you'll see what I mean. But don't worry, the PSP version is available on the PS4 and PS5 as part of the emulation. But if you guys did download the game previously from your own account, then you get it for free. But don't worry, it has R stick support. So anyone that wants to play modern, on modern systems, then you could do so. It's weird because originally when it launched, it didn't have the R stick support, but now it does. So you could play like it with an actual R stick. But to be fair, the PS2 version does support R stick support, so that's good. I just think you need it just for aiming. I'm pretty sure that's enough differences on the PS2 and the PSP versions alongside there. But the thing is, is that for this game, I already mentioned the weapons and that, but you can actually melee attack people from either front or behind. You could do a, a stealth kill, or you could just shove them in a train or something like that, and then they just be dead. It was just funny enough that I recorded a short of the thing, and a lot of people seemed to be laughing about that one. So for anyone that just felt like the original series was just getting stale at this point and wants something new and fresh, then give this game a try. It's pretty cheap on the PlayStation Store, so you shouldn't have a problem finding the game yourself.